So Russell has yet to fully dispel the specter of idealism in, uh, in the previous chapter. Remember he was talking about idealism. He's given us an argument that says you know, it's simpler to believe that they're physical objects, that it's false that everything that exists is just mental. But uh, you know, he's yet to really kind of put the nail in the coffin on the view. Now his attempt at doing this is to say that Barclay's argument has a deep flaw in it, namely that the, it fails to account for these two kinds of knowledge. In this chapter, in this section, uh, Russell uh, gives a more lab, gives a kind of elaborates on this distinction between knowledge by acquaintance and knowledge by description, and he thinks that this is going to allow him to, you know, finally dispel idealism from uh, from our philosophical problems. Uh, so that's what we're going to do in this chapter. We're going to take a look at what Bar uh, Russell has to say about this distinction between knowledge by description and uh, knowledge by acquaintance and knowledge by description. So I don't know if you've been out here before, but this is the Japanese tea gardens. Or the, yeah, the Japanese tea gardens. Uh, it's really vibrant out here. I mean, there's a lot of people out here, which I'm sure you can hear. Uh, you can hear the waterfall off in the distance. The plants are green and lush. They've must, they must have done a lot of recent planting. There's water everywhere, thanks to the recent rains. There's a lot that I'm getting through my senses. Now, what I'm getting through my senses, that's what I'm directly acquainted with. Right? That is at the forefront of my consciousness. The water, the plants, the humidity in the air, the sound from the waterfall, all these things are involved causally with what I'm getting through my senses, but I, I don't have direct access to those things. What I have direct access to are my senses, or the content of my senses. So this is a typical example of what I get through knowledge by acquaintance. It's what I'm immediately aware of. There's no middleman between my senses and, and my awareness. Right? There's a middleman between the waterfall and these kids and the plants and everything uh, and, and my awareness and that's my senses. My senses are the middleman. But what I'm directly aware of, that's the senses. Right? So when I get from my senses, that's part of what I get from knowledge of things by acquaintance. There's, other, there's more that I get by knowledge by acquaintance. It's really interesting Russell says this, you know, if knowledge by acquaintance was limited to just the senses, well then we would know a whole lot. Um, other things that I'm aware of directly, what I have through knowledge by acquaintance, is memory. Right? The contents of what I remember. So I'm going to remember today, at least for a little while, hopefully. <laughs> I remember teaching this morning, I remember friends and family, I remember events, right? Now that immediate awareness of you know, that immediate awareness, what I have at the forefront of my consciousness, that's the memory. That's what I have by knowledge by acquaintance. Uh, something else I have by knowledge by acquaintance is introspection. So this might sound a little strange, but my awareness of my awareness. So right now I, I hear the waterfall. And by knowledge by acquaintance, what's at the forefront of my consciousness is the sound of the waterfall. But what's also there is my awareness that I'm aware of the sound. My awareness that I'm aware of the sound. Now you might start saying, well can I be aware of my awareness of the of the sound? Well maybe, right? I'm sure there's an upper limit of what goes on there, but we're not going to worry about the upper limit of awareness of awareness, right? Uh, for the moment, just uh, as an example of something else that I have by knowledge by acquaintance, is my awareness of hearing that sound. And finally, the last thing that we have by knowledge by acquaintance, what Russell gives us, is what he calls uh, knowledge of abstract ideas or, abs or, or universals. So we've, talk we've had some examples of universals in class. Uh, he, you know, he gives some whiteness. Uh, I think uh, uh, brotherhood was one that he gave, uh, gave an example of. Now these are concepts that apply to many different things, right? Um, numbers are also universals. These are abstract pairs. Trios, quadruples, right? Um, logical relations. These are uh, universals. So we, I, I've, we've talked about logical relations before: sufficient necessity, contrariety, subcontrariety. Right? And then we get the rest of the uh, rest of logic from those uh, relations. Now, Russell says we have that through knowledge of acquaint by acquaintance. The 
act of thinking of these universals he calls conceiving. And the universal itself he calls the concept. That's a really interesting thing to say. Now, uh, we're not going to be able to address that till we get to the chapter on our knowledge of universals. I think that's where he's going to elaborate on that more. So we're definitely going to put a bookmark on that one because that, that's, <laughs> that's a curious thing to say. We're somehow directly aware of universals. Hmm, that's interesting. All right. So, knowledge by acquaintance. Sensory information, memory, introspection, right? My aware, what I call, what, uh, the awareness of my being aware of the waterfall and universals. Now from this, Russell says, all of the knowledge is derived. From this, all of the knowledge is derived. So we'll see what he has to say uh, uh, about that in, in later sections. So that's something you don't see every day. Waterfall in Texas. Well, you are not here. You can't see the waterfall with your own eyes. What you see is an image on your computer screen or your phone or whatever. The waterfall at that the uh, Japanese Tea Gardens in San Antonio, Texas, is about 30 feet high. Uh, I'm sure there's a certain amount of water that falls from the waterfall. There's a certain amount of water that goes through here. Uh, the rock face has, looks like various kinds of stuff growing on it. Okay. Uh, so there's even a rate at which it falls. So the waterfall in the Japanese tea gardens, San Antonio, Texas, that's a definite description. There's one and only one thing that fits that description. There it is. Now, you're not here. You can't see it. Uh, technically, in a way, I can't see it either. All I can see is the perceptions, my sense data that I get, that's somehow causally related to that waterfall. You aren't here to see it, but now you know about it by knowledge, by description. Because there's one and only one thing that fits that description. And there it is. Now the description here is what Russell calls a definite description. And it's basically a description that fits one thing. An ambiguous description is, an, is a description that fits a wide number of things. So waterfalls, right? Waterfalls over five feet high. That's an ambiguous description. That fits a lot of waterfalls, including that one, but a lot more from Niagara Falls to, well, I just don't know that many famous waterfalls. <laughs> uh, so the ambiguous description doesn't fit that, it at least fits that, but it doesn't fit that uniquely. The definite description fits that uniquely because there's no other waterfall in the Japanese tea gardens. Now I know about this uh, through the same way that you know about this, namely the definite description. Remember, by acquaintance, I don't know that waterfall. By acquaintance, I know my sense data, all right? I know my sense data. By description, I know that waterfall. And the description is basically this, that you know, there is this thing, a waterfall, and we can have a certain, certain set of descriptions about waterfalls. And it's located at the Japanese tea gardens. And there it is. Now, Russell's really clear. All knowledge by description must at some point find its origin or find its you know, beginnings and knowledge by acquaintance. So all of my knowledge about waterfalls, all my knowledge by description, about people in history, about, about um, all the physical sciences, about art, all of that must originate some way, shape, or form by acquaintance. What I get from my senses, what I get from memory, what I get from introspection, what I get from universals, that's by acquaintance. And from that, I get everything else. We are back at the uh, back at the waterfall. So there's lots that I know by knowledge by description. I know about Albert Einstein, even though I never met him. I know uh, about um, what? I know about the Eiffel Tower, but I've never been there. I know about um, Capitol Building in Washington D.C. Again, I've never been there. There's lots that I know by knowledge by description. 
But all of it, Russell says, can be reduced to or found, right, or derived from knowledge by acquaintance. So, without forecasting too much ahead, he gives some of these examples in there. Uh, by knowledge by acquaintance, I'm familiar with sense data, and this sense data is from a teacher at some point that has told me about the Capitol building being in Washington, D.C. And uh, I've, been, I've seen pictures of the Capitol building. I've seen pictures of Washington, D.C. I've seen Washington, D.C. on a map. And I've seen the Capitol building on a map. Now, by acquaintance, I have all of that, all that sensory input. I also have some general principles about the reliability of teachers and maps and pictures and everything else. And from that reliability, I know, by description, the Capitol building. Now, obviously there's going to be more room for error depending upon the general principles or the sources of the, of the information. Granted. But that doesn't change the kind. Even though you're seeing this waterfall on the computer screen, it is by description that you know about this waterfall. Not acquaintance. Not acquaintance. By acquaintance, you have the sensory data. Then you have certain general principles involved about the reliability of video cameras and me and, and everything else. And that all together gets your knowledge or description of the waterfall just as I have knowledge by description of the Capitol building.